When the city of Vancouver tore down the encampment here on the downtown east side, we were left wondering, what happened to those people? Where did they go? Where did they shuffle their lives to? Where did they find shelter? Those questions eventually led us here and to a room just up those stairs, an electrical closet actually, and a man who had learned to survive, having fallen through the cracks of a system that had failed him so many times before. <laughs> okay, uh, this is my home away from home. Uh, home away from homeless. <laughs> um, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a power electric room. Uh, it powers the block. It powers all the buildings and rooms in the block. An electrical uh, closet this, this, that for uh, several months gave Dino problem Bundy, problem. or Boomer, as he's known... Right here, this here uh, turns off the lights and I got a little night light here. A little bit of the stability he'd always wanted. I'm not really sure what power transformers do, but uh, they steadily hum. Uh, uh, it's kind of a comforting white noise uh, feeling once you get used to it. And as the days um, passed and no one came knocking, uh, like he I turned this into his home. This was uh, the uh, utility closet for the light bulbs. I turned it into a bed. Um, the tents, the tents, as you know, all the encampments, uh, once someone tears down a tent, it's like, uh, it's a free-for-all. So I basically come across my uh, sleeping bags and whatever else I need uh, through a decamped tent. How did you find this room? <sighs> Happenstance, uh, synchronicity. Uh, I just have a nose for that sort of stuff. How much do you worry that this won't last forever? Someone's going to... I'm concerned that every day. So it's really, it's really tightrope uh, that you have to walk. And uh, I find that you're better off walking alone for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I've, I've, I've been alone my whole life. I, I grew up in an orphanage. And I'm an orphan, so, uh, yeah. Born to a black father and an indigenous mother, Boomer was orphaned at the age of five and sent to the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children in the 1960s. The provincial government apologized in 2014 for abuses that occurred there. When you're homeless, it's the really small things that matter that really are really important to you. And you only notice it when, when they're taken, taken away. I had a, a beautiful bike, it got stolen. Every time I got a phone, it got stolen. So uh, I went to a Home Depot and uh, I, I, just, I just changed the deadbolt on this. I feel so much better now that I've got control of my ins and outs. And there's a nice and tight and secure. Security uh, is something Boomer searched for uh, his entire job. life. What was the job you were doing in Calgary? Uh, a steel stud framer. He worked a stint in construction but ended up on the streets. Drugs, he said, a way to deal with the pain life threw at him. I had to deal with a lot of racism, uh, a lot of uh, discrimination, a lot of uh, lower, lower pay. And it was really frustrating. Um, and so, yeah, I just got fed up with it to a certain point where I had to drop out because I just couldn't put up with, uh, with the struggle of uh, trying to maintain my dignity Sixteen years ago, when a friend decided to head west, Boomer hitched along and ended up on Vancouver's downtown east side, where he quickly became an advocate for his community. All of a sudden, I hear this person singing, and I turned around, and there's Boomer dancing around, asking me what my name was in a song, and I answered him, and he started singing, Help Me, Rhonda, and then we started talking. And that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. He would speak to me, ah, my look. He would say to me, good morning, and I'd say, good morning. Rhonda Stevens of the Nishka Nation helps Indigenous residents find housing. She says Boomer was a tireless warrior, endlessly charismatic, and fought for others despite his own struggles. Boomer came from a place of pain. At the same time, I think of resiliency, goodness. How he turned his narrative into being able to help people understand that pain doesn't always have to hurt. You can make it into something good. 
My name is Boomer Bundy and I have lived in an SRO in Alexander Street since 2016. Danny Aiello is a housing advocate who worked with Boomer. She says he had a home for several years in an SRO or low-cost rental unit. And I feel compelled to express my concerns over the way my most recent landlord has bullied and harassed me for the last year and a half. She encouraged Boomer to write to City Council about an issue advocates say is widespread and would eventually see him homeless again. Illegal evictions in order to raise rents. What kind of a toll did it take on him? It was really impacting him. Put him under a ton of stress and then... When the landlord locked him out, I, I was really upset. Um, and I had said to him, listen, we can get an order of possession for your room, we can get a monetary order for the distress and the losing your belongings. He, he, just, he, he just didn't want really anything to do with all of that. He was kind of done. Yeah, this is where I live now and, um, well, you know, you, you, you accept uh, as, as, it, as it comes and as it goes, right? And I don't know, maybe that's what keeps me so young looking. <laughs> That ability to see light in the darkness never really left him, even when he ended up in that closet. Friends worried for him in that isolated room, but Boomer felt secure, though uncertain about what lay ahead. I'm alive, I'm healthy, but uh, I can't see in the possible near future what I'm really going to do. I mean, if you really keep at it, you find something, right? You, you really gotta, you really gotta dig your heels in, though. I have a recovery host that uh, I'm hoping to get into. But now I want, really want to put my heart into trying to quit, and uh, you know, try to live a normal life, as it were. That life, that normal life, as he called it, never got to happen. A few days after our interview, I came into work and was told that there had been a fire. It was in Boomer's closet. Boomer was inside and he didn't survive. When we got here, emergency crews were gone, but they were already clearing out his room. He ended up alone, just like when he first came here, he was alone. And he made a family here, but when he died, he was by himself. The stories need to be heard. And Boomer's story is so important. He represents me. He represents my children. He represents every person that lives down here.